I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to today FM. My name is Dan Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotaraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Paz. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Jackie Spate, this is FBC News. Tonight, Prime Minister lashes out at false sugar bill rumors. Public Accounts Committee wants more responsibility from institutions. And Sodelpa makes submissions for changes ahead of 2018 elections. Prime Minister of Wurenge Mbaini Marama has strongly criticized politicians and former politicians who he says have been misinforming sugarcane farmers on the contents on two new sugar industry bills before Parliament. According to the Prime Minister, sugarcane farmers have been told that they will not have any rights whatsoever in the two new bills, the Reform of Sugar Industry Bill and the Sugarcane Growers Fund Amendment Bill. Eleanor Turangai View with this report. Over 800 cane farmers and members of the public gathered at the Senganga Community Hall this afternoon to meet with the Prime Minister and Minister for Sugar, Wurenge Mbanyamarama, to discuss issues they are currently facing in the sugar industry. But before the consultation started, the Prime Minister strongly warned cane growers not to listen to politicians and former politicians who he says are talking as if the sugar industry will collapse tomorrow. They are trying to politicize the sugarcane industry and they are trying to use you for their own political gain. In particular, they are using you to try to drive a wedge between you and I and to create uh, distrust, to create uncertainty, uh, not only in the sugarcane industry, but throughout Fiji. But I know it is not going to work because, uh, you know, I've always been there for you. I've always served your best interest. And I want to assure you all today that I will never use you in the way that, I, that they are using you for my own political gain. The Prime Minister then went on to mention what the two new bills, the Reform of Sugar Industry Bill and the Sugar Cane Growers Fund Amendment Bill will contain and the effect it will have on the cane growers themselves. There are a couple of amendments that I will bring about in the bill. For example, registered growers will no longer have to pay a fee for having their farms registered or changing their records. That provision will be removed. In relation to the Cane Growers Council, I know some of the politicians have been pushing for elections. So I will be increasing the membership of the council by ensuring that each district will be represented on the council. One of the requirements that we want to put in the amendments to the bill is that the Cane Growers Council must on a regular basis, go out and consult all the growers. The Minister for Sugar also clarified to the farmers the specifics of the Master Award, an issue that has been raised by almost every cane farming community. Some people are also claiming that the current Master Award will be changed soon as the bills become law. Take it from me, this won't happen. The Prime Minister also gave his assurance to the farmers that the two new bills, which are currently before the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Economic Affairs, will not adversely affect individual cane farmers and that their rights will always be protected under the Constitution. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Representatives from the Ministry of Public Enterprises appeared before the Public Accounts Committee today to clarify their role in the oversight of state-owned enterprises. PAC Chairman Ashneel Sudhakar says government reforms are working. However, there needs to be more efficient financial reporting. Maggie Boyle with the story. In the hot seat, Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Public Enterprises, David Kolatangane, explaining their work across 27 SOEs. While the ministry takes care of monitoring and evaluation, the fiduciary duty falls on the board of directors. The, the, the audit functions are really, very 
responsibility lies squarely on you know, the board themselves. So the audit report, uh, the, the audit report is basically the only supplies with the board. Scrutinizing Auditor General reports from 2009 through to 2013, PAC members raised a number of questions. They submitted their accounts from 2004, the area 2003, one of them is very to uh, daily property Is there any particular reason why some of these state enterprises are not submitting their, their annual accounts to the Auditor General or the Ministry of the Auditor? That's in terms of return on investment uh, to the assets uh, for all these uh, 30 plus uh, state-owned entities. With government reforms coming into play from 2009, the PAC chairman, Ashneel Sudaka, says better financial reporting is needed. Before the reforms came into place, the public, uh, uh, the public enterprises, uh, all these were combined, were giving the government about 2 to $3 million in returns. But this year, uh, the government has got about 30 plus million dollars from these enterprises so it's now the government has been able to turn it around pack will this week be hearing from various ministries before tabling a finalized report for parliament in the september sitting maggie boyle fbc news the Social Democratic Liberal Party has suggested changes in the 2018 general elections while making a submission to the Parliamentary Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights. This was also one of the first public engagements for New Sudelpa leader Siti Veni Rambuka. Siti Veni Rambuka led a three-member Sudelpa panel questioning a number of operational issues surrounding the 2014 elections. The party leader found issues with the Multinational Observer Group report on voter intimidation, saying that having the then Fiji First candidate A.S. Sayed Kayum as a serving minister wasn't ideal. They did not say that there was no intimidation. There might have been a feeling of fait accompli prevailing upon the voters of Fiji, and none expected anything to change when the incumbent party's general secretary was also the minister for election and the principal legal officer in the country. Thus, the absence of any legal challenges to the court of disputed return. Party General Secretary Andilitia Ngyoni Baravi told the committee that voters had no idea about pre-polling as there was little awareness. I was in one of those uh, pre-polling stations and uh, when we came to advise them that they were going to hold the pre-polling in the next few days, to their surprise, and I was told as well that they thought that it was just a practice, just a rehearsal for the actual polling that they were expecting to have been held on the 17th of September. Rambuka also picked on Section 115 of the Electoral Decree, which requires all NGOs, civil society organizations and even universities to register with the Elections Office before conducting any awareness. In the case of voter education and awareness, highlighted in paragraph 8 of this submission, particularly of this subsection, had grave adverse effects on the parties contesting against the Fiji First Party. So Delpa has, however, endorsed one-day polling, saying it's possible for a place like Fiji and has many advantages. Edwin Nand, FBC News. There will be delays to the construction of a new 200-bed maternity ward at CWM Hospital. Minister for Health and Medical Services Chone Osumate says the ministry needs more time to get all the plans together. Pranita Prakash reports. An average of 900 babies are delivered at the CWM Hospital per month and 9,000 babies annually. Just over a million dollars has been allocated to extend current facilities and build a new maternity ward, but there's lots of preparations pending. There's a big gully. So when you build in that sort of an area, you have to be very sure with what you're doing. So you need a lot of experts, knowledge, uh, engineers to do the assessments and all of those other things. So I think that I believe the project manager has been appointed. Now during this period, all of those experts will come and analyze the geotechnical survey and all of this. So those things will be taking place over this year into the next year. We will not see any construction yet. We want to make sure that when we do construct, that every possible angle has been taken care of. Usamate says in the meantime, 
the new Makoi maternity unit is expected to relieve some of the pressure on the CWM hospital. Eventually, we will see this uh, this uh, maternity hospital being extended. We have 200 beds, and it will need to cater for the big explo explosion of population that we have in the area from uh, Dosori to Lani. Yeah? So it will eventually come on. But right now, we have the Makoi maternity, which is almost complete. So hopefully, that will give some relief, not enough relief, to the pressure here at the CWM. The new maternity ward will be situated next to the existing one. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Airports Fiji Limited today announced an unprecedented dividend payout to government of $30 million. The amount has doubled from last year and has once again set the benchmark for other state-owned enterprises in the country to follow. Ellen Stalls has more. Announcing the record-breaking dividend payout, Permanent Secretary for Public Enterprise David Kolitangane says the government is pleased with this milestone achievement. We continue to highlight uh, to the media and uh, well as uh, we promote within government the, the model of uh, uh, maintaining discipline uh, in uh, expenditure and uh, in the control of, of the <coughs> the. The entity, AFL's total revenue in 2015 increased by 92.55 million compared to 64.37 million in 2014. Its net operating profit before tax amounted to 45.65 million. However, a further net interest income of $398,000 brought the total profit before tax of 46.04 million compared to 18 million in 2014. Because it's only through effectively communicating your messages, your vision that the executives and the directors have uh, to all the people that are employed at AFL that you can get to your goals, that you can get to your various uh, destinations in a much faster way. Khan has also attributed this success to the reforms being carried out by AFL as well as the new prices being charged for space at the Nandi International Airport. Overall, the chief executive says the result could not have been made possible without the hard work and sheer determination showed by the 500-odd staff at AFL, proving once again that teamwork is key to success. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Elections Office launches a new system for voters and great opportunities in Fiji for call centres. Stay with us. Welcome back, this is FBC News. For the first time, the Fijian Elections Office is providing Fijians with GPS coordinates of all polling venues for the next general election. The polling venue locator application was launched by Electoral Commission Chairman Chen Ban Yang in Suva this afternoon. Akusita Tale reports. This application shows the provisional polling venues around the country, making it easier for Fijians to locate the nearest polling center in the 2018 general election. With this GIS application, Fijians will be able to locate polling venues all over Fiji at their own convenience. They will also be able to identify venues that may be even closer to their residents in comparison with where they had voted in 2014. So far, there are 1,682 provisional polling venues with 306 new ones. However, an assessment will be conducted later to confirm whether they will adopt all the new ones or only some. We are happy to add more venues provided you can let us know that in a particular areas uh, you have a place that is suitable for a venue and uh, one of the requirements is that it should allow for 
uh, unlimited public access, meaning you don't do not uh, uh, you do not need any qualifications or uh, particular requirements before you can enter premises. Um, it should have uh, we we will be able to consider that as a venue. Sanim says that by this time next year, they will be able to issue a fixed venue with certificates and a sticker to confirm details whether it's a pre-poll or polling venue. This would be one of the first times in Fiji where you can actually find the names of all the schools, most of the schools that we use as polling stations, all the schools, community centers are actually now um, available on the Google map. So uh, you can try and find whether your house is nearest to any and uh, also see whether you can find a nearest, uh, nearest venue to vote. The polling venue locate application can be accessed through the Fijian Elections Office website on www.electionsfiji.gov.fj. The Fijian Elections Office will continue to upgrade this application as we approach the next general election. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Many opportunities lie in the business process outsourcing sector or call centers in Fiji and the industry hopes to utilize this avenue. This platform comes following the visit by a 12-member delegation from Australia who are in the country on a three-day mission. Rachel Nath has more. Fiji is quite often thought of as a destination for tourism. However, those in the call center sector want to change this. The ICT sector is where we see there's huge, huge opportunities, um, in the, in, especially in this back office processing area. This is where we see Fiji can really diversify their economy. Um, you've got the skilled workforce um, coming out of the universities. One of the leading businesses in the sector, Central Com's general manager Shane Collins says, many people think of India, Philippines and the Middle East when it comes to BPO. But this perception is changing. The, the Commission bring um, people into the country to see what an outsourcing business can do, particularly for Fiji in its infancy in this, in this region, um, is, is great exposure for us. Businesses such as ANZ Captive Group, Centercom, MindPearl and PAC Leader Group have been given this platform to showcase the infrastructure available in Fiji. Also, more employment opportunities are expected to be created through this mission. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Ministry of Fisheries and Forests has plans in place to develop the bamboo industry in the country. In collaboration with the Government of China, Forest Deputy Conservator Semin Raunibaka says a memorandum of understanding was signed between the two governments last year to develop the industry. Raunibaka says it's a positive development because they are providing assistance, especially on the grassroots level production. In forestry, mostly uh, they are looking at how they can be able to assist in developing our bamboo industry. Uh, those are the areas that uh, they are looking at in this, uh, in this visit. And um, after the visit, we will be able to develop uh, our projects, uh, different projects in the field of fisheries and forests, and also the energy later on in the afternoon. The Chinese government has given a $500,000 grant for the repairs to the fence at the presidential compound. The existing fence was built in 2009. Yeah. President Major General Retired Chiochi Kondrote, while receiving the check, said the assistance is of course in addition to the ongoing and deepening bilateral relations and cooperation between our two countries. Kondrote says he intends to open up the state house and the presidential compound after upgrading works so Fijians can visit and appreciate the property, which in in essence belongs to all Fijians. He says tourists will also appreciate the open days. Repairs will be carried out by the China Railway No. 5 engineering company, Fiji Limited. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with a preview of what's coming up. And good evening in sports after the break. The latest from Team Fiji in the build-up to the Rio Olympics. And set the Tamanivalu back for Chief Super Rugby semi final. This and more coming up. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Athletics Fiji has cleared the air as to why sprinter Cecilia Seavula was selected to represent the country at the Olympic Games. Athletics team manager Joseph Roden Jr. says Seavula ran good times consistently during the season, which gave her the advantage ahead of Makareta Naulu, who ran the fastest time in the Melanesian Games. Vasnil Prasad explains. <laughs> Fiji's lone track athlete for the Olympic Games, Cecilia Sevula's form in the championships throughout the last season made her the best female athlete in contention for a wild card entry. She had uh, consistently run 12-2, 12-3 out in the US. And to qualify, you have to actually register your times in a recognized sanctioned meet under the IWF and Oceania calendars. The former St. Joseph Secondary School student is hoping to clock under 11.8 seconds in a first Olympic meet. No aim is to run 11.8, uh, go sub-12, uh, just to prove to everyone that I really deserve going to Rio. And this wasn't uh, luck. I, all, all I can say is I'm blessed to be given this opportunity to represent the country in this world event. Her coach, Bolatafo, has also been working hard with the former Coca-Cola gold medalist for the last three weeks. Now she's really uh, got into the, the gear and she's really looking well. And uh, our aim is to do better than uh, what she has done uh, this season, her personal best. Despite the odds stacked against her, Sevula has promised to deliver in the 100-meter race. Something whatever has happened and uh, uh, it wasn't that good uh, despite the uh, niggling injuries that I had but uh, no no excuses and um, I know uh, I can do better. Sevula and her team leave for Rio on Friday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Fiji's athletes heading to the Olympic and Paralympic Games received some financial assistance today. Athletics Fiji's major sponsors Shop and Save has presented them a check of $5,000. This money will be shared amongst the athletes and officials going for the Olympic and Paralympics this year. For this particular 5K, it's simple. Um, these guys have put in a lot of uh, personal uh, commitments and personal sacrifices. So what is going to be done is uh, it's actually going to be split up between the Paralympics team and the coaches and the athletes of uh, the team that's going to the Olympics. And um, yeah, they're just going to use it for their support and for their funds that they're going to take with them to the Olympics. The Paralympics will be held from the 7th to the 18th of September in Brazil. With just 10 days left for the start of the Olympic Games in Brazil, the road to gold for the Fiji men's sevens team is nowhere near as easy as many would think. Rohit Deo takes us through the probable route the men's sevens team might face in search of a gold medal. The Fiji sevens team left our shores yesterday with very high hopes. If our team does win its pool with three wins, and barring any other upsets in other two pools, we are most likely to face either one of France, Kenya, Argentina or USA in the quarterfinals. Our top seeding in the tournament might see us avoiding South Africa and New Zealand in the semis, where we might face Great Britain or Australia. If all goes well for the Ben Ryan coach side, a final against New Zealand or South Africa is on the cards. This whole scenario will change if there are any upsets recorded, which is highly likely in the game of sevens. Meanwhile, Ryan says the support from back home will not be forgotten. I know the nation's going to stop. There's not going to be much work done then. And I'm grateful for their support. Cheer loudly. We might not physically be able to hear you from the TVs in Fiji and Brazil, but we know you're there and it gets gets the boys off the ground and makes another tackle and you'll be in the tunnel when we run on in that first game, so the knack of a We play Brazil in our opening match at 4.30 a.m. on the 10th of August and watch the sevens competition live on FBC TV. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Olympics fever is already beginning to hit Fiji. Various shop outlets in Suva already have Olympic Games uniforms on display, with the Fiji sevens team jersey being the most prominent. FBC Sports asked a few people today on what they thought about Team Fiji and unsurprisingly the majority of them spoke only about their hopes for the men's sevens team. I'm cheering for the Fiji sevens team and they will win the first gold medal. Well, uh, I think our Fiji sevens team is uh, really well prepared under the guidance of our uh, coach Ben uh, Ryan and they've been doing a lot of hard work so no doubt they will come on top as winners.
I'm going to watch all Fiji's pool match and I think Fiji will win and hope our boys bring back the victory. The goal is already ours and I want to thank Ben Ryan for bringing the boys this far. Finally, in sports tonight and super rugby competition, the Chiefs are set to welcome back the All Black Center for this weekend's semi-final against the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes host the Chiefs at 7.35 p.m. on Saturday, and you can watch that match live on FBC TV. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Tourism Fiji's Australian Regional Office has won the award for Best Tourist Office International at Australia's Premier Tourism Industry Event of the Year, the National Travel Industry Awards 2016. The awards recognise the industry's finest across 38 categories, from travel industry individuals to businesses, for their excellence and contribution to the travel industry. Tourism Fiji's Australian Regional Director Carla Walton says the NTIA 2016 was the biggest award celebration the industry has witnessed. The high sun at clouds drifted across the clear blue sky in most parts of the country today. Temperatures were close to normal. Barwood recorded the warmest at 33 degrees, while Autoka and Lombasa trailed at 32. The rest ranged in the upper 20s. For tomorrow, expect sunny periods with cloudy intervals later in the day. And the weather forecast for Friday is looking pleasant as there is no sign of any significant rain. At sea, east to southeast winds are getting from 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Prime Minister lashes out at false sugar bill rumours. Public Accounts Committee wants more responsibility from institutions. And Sudelpa makes submissions for changes ahead of 2018 elections. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question for this week, we are asking... Can any other sports, apart from Rugby Sevens, win an Olympic medal? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. I am Rayan Khan Gurbo Talebuke. जैसे वेस्टिवल एग्रेड है गर्भों में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है गर्भों में एलिन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सहमा ने हमारे वेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जेंट